Well, seems like it's tradition. Every time there's a brand new Ember model, you see it here first. Hello and welcome everybody, Josh the RV Nerd of Vicious RV, kicking it down here at Ember again today with a brand new model. This is uh, the newest member of their E-Series right here, um, and it's uh, it's their first super slide bunkhouse in the E-Series. Now if this is the first one of these you've seen, this is what they call their Essential Series, but don't get me, the, the thing is it's easy to twist that up. Like a lot of manufacturers are coming out with this big decontented trend right now, where it's like everything is super, super basic. When you talk about what makes uh, an essential series in an Ember, it's still pretty loaded. Like, for instance, we still have um, Asdell being used in the walls and the uh, the aluminum framed laminated floor. It still has that fully walkable roof up top there. Uh, they have a six foot ten interior height, which somebody like me, I love both in the shower as well as not to mention the fact it provides a lot better um, like spacing between the bunks as compared to an industry standard six and a half foot tall camper. And let's talk about that. Like all the embers that have bunks basically at this point, you have that uh, adjustable like cargo bunk locker system where it could be a pair of double bunks, it could be a pair of single bunks, or a Jack and Jill, which is a single over double. That's my term for it. I don't think that's an industry term. But it's got this just gigantic cargo door off the side and a normal cargo door off the back, so you can load all kinds of stuff in this if you want. You could leave the bottom like a dog kennel and the top like a bunk or a cargo shelf. You could make it a walk-in closet. It could be an office desk space with zero modifications from the factory because it's designed to be modular and removed, which is really, really cool. But they also did things in this, like they gave it uh, an 18,000 BTU variable speed air conditioner, which is like, that's the kind of stuff that like Brinkley's doing. You're getting on a quote, essential series Ember. Even a basic Ember still has things like a true queen bed, Goodyear tires, heated belly, holding tank heaters, and a bunch of other stuff. This one is just their first super slide, potentially bunk model, but it doesn't have to be a bunk model. That's what's so cool about these. And I want to give them some serious credit here because when you start making a private bedroom uh, bunkhouse with a super slide and you're trying to keep it without uh, like not being 40 feet long, there's just only so many ways you can, you can lay it out. So there's certainly some similarities here uh, to maybe some other things, but they still found a way to inject something a little bit more interesting, maybe, uh, or at least unique, if not interesting. Maybe none of this interests you. I don't know. Perhaps that's a bold assumption. But uh, looking at this thing here, what they packed into this space, I think, is very impressive. Now, this is very kid and pet friendly, like no heat vents in the floor, no carpeting. I love it when the slide floor and the main floor match. But they, they maintained, kind of from their, their smaller version of this that only has a sofa or a dinette, as this has both, that little elevated dining bar right there. And if nothing else, it can act as additional countertop prep space, but it can also just be a cool place to, you know, be able to, like, set the kids up with a bowl of cereal in the morning or something like that, especially depending on how many people you have camping with you. Maybe you're utilizing that dinette as a sleeper. Maybe you want a spot you can sit down and sip some coffee. I mean, there's, you know, no one way that you necessarily have to use this RV. That's really the whole point is that especially with that flex function uh, Murphy bed cargo locker thing that they got going on, you can use this a lot of different ways. Now, uh, again, the smaller version of this that you uh, may have already seen on the channel, you have your choice between either a theater seat or a dinette. And that's where this one kind of comes in. This is the one that gives us a full super slide where you don't have to make that decision. But because they maintain that six foot 10 extra tall ceiling, they can have good size windows in the slide. And I like how all the windows are on the same like level plane, you know, while still maintaining full overhead storage within that slide out. That to me is very cool. And they created an extra little pocket of space over here that they utilize like that's going to, I don't know, maybe be a coffee bar or you could make it like a device charge station, whatever works for you. It's just kind of going to be up to you. Up top here, this is something that is uh, currently within their family, at least exclusive to the E-Series. And that is this 18K Vario uh, Furion air conditioner. So the thing is, it what's kind of cool about it is it never really turns off. It just has like multiple output speeds and settings in it and it adjusts to what it needs at a given time kind of like if you think of the dash of a lot of modern vehicles 
There's an auto mode for your climate controls for heating and cooling. That's kind of what that air conditioner will do is that it'll crank up or down as it needs. A lot of RV air conditioners, they're either on or they're off. Now they might have a high and a low mode, but this has all kinds of different in-between settings. By the way, your, your stools, they are included. And you see those extra household outlets down there. Now, pardon my vest. Uh, it got a little toasty in here. They were kind enough to pull this RV in. Like, it's about 30 degrees outside today. They were kind enough to pull this inside for me where I didn't have to be teeth chattering the whole time. And I certainly uh, do appreciate that. Um, actually, while we're sitting here, this is kind of the view from your sofa, from your theater seat. And that's one of the things I like about this one. A lot of builders who make this layout, the only place where they have even TV hookups, not even usually a factory TV, is directly to our left at a 90 degree neckwrecker entertainment. And this doesn't have that. Now, let's be fair about a couple things. This RV's cool and does a lot of cool things, but it does, generally speaking, lack a lot of campsite window coverage. And that TV is up a little bit high. I would really like to see it if that TV could be on a drop-down mechanism because it's on a pivoting swing arm, uh, which, I don't know, maybe there's some benefit to that. It would be nice, I think, if it could drop down a little bit for, for easier viewing since it is up so high. But where it's at, if someone is sitting at the dining breakfast bar, they're basically, their their head, if they got a big old fat nugget like mine, their, their head's not going to be blocking the line of sight to the TV, which I think is cool. Um, that is also now a smart TV. These have been 12-volt TVs, remember, for a while, but they finally went smart TV on them, which I'm uh, really excited. Now, where we're sitting at right here, like if you look under the cabinets, you're not really seeing um, kitchen outlets. Don't worry, when we turn around, you're going to see uh, a couple sitting right next to the countertop level. I think at the best possible position for them um but if uh, i mentioned how they have this like multi-function cargo bunk locker system if you're not familiar with it maybe this is the first time you've seen an ember sometimes i forget that not everybody lives on this channel the way that i do so allow me to kind of give you a tour of this so many rv manufacturers they give you double over double bunks and that's fine but if you notice you have this e-track system or as they call it ember track because that's marketing, baby. Uh, the thing is, every one of those little slots is another position where you can or maybe don't want uh, uh, the bunk arrangement because you can you can move this around any way that you please. And if you look down below, there's some household outlets. And on the, uh, the wall next to us that you can't see, there's some household and USB outlets. It's a very flex function kind of thing. For instance, let me actually give you a, a quick tour of this thing. So each of these bunks is basically a, a four-piece object, or two-piece object. So there's four bunk pieces in total. You can raise them up, lower them down. You can use just the long, the, the single bed. You can do double bed. It can be a, uh, a desk arrangement. You can take that stuff completely out of there if you want to cargo load it. And those bunks, by the way... Um, in the double format are 600 pound rated, and in the single format are 300 pound rated. So they maintain some of the best bunk ratings out there. And I, I will tell you, to kind of to reset that and to, to put the stuff in and out of that bunk area, it's a little bit laborious, but if my chicken arms can do it, anybody can. Because the, the bunk pieces are actually very light. They are all welded cage aluminum frame just to help make uh, physically manipulating them a little bit easier, which I think is cool. I also really like that no knee knocking dream dinette kind of system that they have over there. So this, I think, I'm showing it primarily in bunk mode today because I do think that's probably the primary function of this camper. I think each RV serves a different purpose, but if you like everything about this, but you just don't care for the bunks, you can get rid of them and then, but, but like, it doesn't take a claw hammer to do it. You don't have to physically rip apart and modify your RV to accomplish that. And I think that is very, very cool. Now, looking just to the left over here, opening up that door, you can see the, uh, that could be pantry, that could be dresser space. And I love the fact that because they're extra tall, they had extra space below the refrigerator, but they didn't waste that. And that is one of the, the larger 10 plus cubic foot 12 volt compressor fridges, by the way. They didn't shrink down to like an eight cube 12 volt uh, because this is one of their smaller models. And those drawers that you saw, those are all residential soft clothes. And that is a uh, convection microwave oven with air fryer function as well. That is one of the things that may be a make or break thing for you in the E-Series. They don't really do 
um, a, uh, a, a full on, what do I want to say? Oven. They don't do a propane oven here. You can get that when you go to touring, but the E series that we're looking at, they are just the, the North South two burner stove, which creates extra counter space. And then just the convection microwave air fryer wombo combo one, two, three, right down below that. So there's, you know, a lot of different, uh, people who have different feelings on different things. There's not an option for a propane oven. That's just how these are. It's a little bit different. Uh, but again, if you if there's some of those extra features you're looking for, that's again where the Touring Edition series of embers kind of comes into play. I, uh, there is storage below that dinette, although they don't give you any sort of like easy access doors or drawers or anything like that. But there is storage below it. I did want you to get to see a, uh, a look at that. And again, that air conditioner, one of the other cool things about it is that it's remote controlled. And that remote that you saw, wherever you have that remote held in the RV, that's like basically your thermostat. So like if you're sitting, um, you know, in the theater seat, it will try to climate control according to your position, assuming that you have the uh, remote control with you. And when you turn it on, it does have some LED lights that kick on to like tell you that it's on and to tell you the temperature setting and all that kind of stuff. But there's also a, a button on that remote. Like if you are a light sensitive sleeper, you can turn the light on the actual air unit itself off so that it's not going to disturb anyone. It's not, I said light. It's not like it's a big bright light. It's just the LED lights on the actual display on the air conditioner itself. You can turn those off. Now, speaking of lighting, this is another really cool thing I like on these. Now, the camera is about to warble a little bit. They have dimmer switch lighting in here, uh, which my camera, unless it's all the way up, doesn't really like. But they also still have the, the smart command system over here. But what's neat is it does just have click physical switch panels so you don't necessarily have to go bluetooth digital for everything if you don't want to now i mentioned i was going to point this out verbally sorry but as we uh spun around i don't know if you noticed on the other side of this elevated countertop there's uh two sets of power outlets there i'm going to get you a better look at that coming the other direction first of all i want to peek at the bathroom which does not have the peekaboo i smell you bathroom door here in the living area, since it's the biggest cabin, they give it one of the big vent fans. Now, when you get into some of the other embers, the Touring, the Overland Edition, that's all you're going to find. Here at the E-Series, it does drop down to a smaller vent in the bathroom, which is a smaller room, but it is still a Max Air variety, which still has an integrated, um, basically, roof protection cover built right onto it, so that uh, even on a rainy day, you can still uh, utilize it. Over here in the corner, uh, not just a mirror glued against the wall. It is still a full backlit corner uh, Lipitor storage cabinet, which is nice. Um, also, one thing I do want to point out, like when you look at me doing my toilet selfie champion routine right here, you can see that there's awesome space around that toilet. The one that we are looking at today is a prototype. And they realized after they put this thing in, the toilet is a little bit too much in the middle of the room. So that's going to go back a little bit toward the shower and to the left about three inches to really open up more floor space here without losing good hip, elbow, and shoulder room. So kind of keep that little detail and factoid in mind, whatever word you want to use for it. And again, with that six foot 10 ceiling, if you're a little bit taller than the average bear like I am, well, you're going to fit in there just fine. And again, if you're worried about privacy, that does have a full like wall uh, effectively right there. Now, I mentioned those power outlets. I want to make sure you get to see those. Let me, I'm gonna spin you around very slowly because I don't like to whip the camera around. That kind of stuff makes me motion sick. And I know that I do it inadvertently sometimes, but never mind. Oh, shoot. I love my stupid Diet Mountain Dew can over there in the corner. I'll go get that picked up. I hate it when I do stuff like that. Actually, what drives, uh, drives me a little more nuts is like when I'm at like some kind of um, RV show or even the RV dealer displays and people just like when they're done drinking their bottle of water, they just crush it up and just like throw it on the counter and like, oh, somebody else gets paid to clean that up. That's that kind of lazy, stupid crap. I just, I can't understand. That's just lack of respect. Apparently, I don't know, uh, their, their parents forgot to raise them. I'm not sure. <laughs> little cool detail too. Right in the slide, you see that little switch right there? For the lights right above you it, it's it's nice to have something like that one click away that you don't have to go like um you know getting out of your chair and, and clicking and then sitting back down and i know that sounds like first world problems but it's convenient it's nice um the dual sliding pocket doors right here well i guess not technically pocket doors but privacy doors for the bedroom i i do like how they have a magnet catch in the middle because if you do happen to be uh folding some laundry aggressively or something like that you can make sure that door doesn't happen to wiggle its way open because i mean those bunks aren't going to fill themselves you know what i mean guys anyway um 
This is a pretty straightforward front end, but I love that the overhead is a full cabinet. And uh, we're, we're going to get you a little peek at these. You see where those little amber lights are glowing back there? There is some, uh, I call them headboard power pockets back there for some easy storage. And you might notice how the bed's very easy to walk around. And that's not a short queen. So that is one of those areas where this is a little bit longer, a little heavier, certainly a little more expensive than some of the other things, maybe roughly in this class. But that's a 60 by 80 true queen bed right from the factory that you can legit uh, comfortably walk around, which I think is kind of a cool thing. Now, there's another of those big XL Max Air vent fans above us here in the bedroom right now. I love that they gave us the wall controller. I don't like the location of it because I feel like I'm going to constantly bump it if I roll over at night or something like that. But that's, again, that's kind of a little thing. That's just me. Cracking open the storage in here, you see the, uh, the double dresser drawers, one on each side, plus, again, the full storage above the bed. Not to mention the fact that down below the bed, you have yourself uh, a gas struts for easy lift access. And uh, you know what? A frankly, pretty generic, pretty boring, but pretty effective kind of footlocker storage space right there where you can make sure your cargo stays in there and it is totally separate from anything going on in the pass-through. Now, what I'm not sure with that countertop peninsula and this super slide, I don't know what the road mode's gonna look like, but uh, we're gonna find out. Okay, so this isn't flawless, but it's not the end, of, it's not awful either. Um, how travel accessible this is may depend a little bit on your stature. This is one thing I have noticed when a manufacturer goes with these countertop peninsulas, it can get a little bit tight. But if you're willing to do the sideways travel trailer two-step and butt scoop boogie up against that countertop, just like I did in real time, you can get yourself back here. You can get to the bunks, you can get to the bathroom. And although I don't feel you should necessarily have to think of it like this, the fact is, off the back, you do have that cargo door. While it doesn't have any stairs or anything, if the kids are in a really important pinch, you could crack that open. They could slide themselves up here into the bathroom for a quick travel and potty stop. And keep in mind, depending on what you're loading in this thing, obviously with the side cargo door, some big things are easy to load. But you have the potential to load some long stuff here. And to help us with that, I brought with me my handy dandy little uh, laser measure guy. So if we line that sucker up, click that little button, what I'm finding is you have about 13 feet and a couple inches from the back of this thing. And keep in mind, I actually bumped it a little bit forward trying to get it squared up, but you've got about 13 feet and change of straight loading space in here. And that makes me think, depending on what you're doing, this could potentially be something like a kayak hauler. And a couple more quick little factoids I think are kind of neat before we step outside. Remember that dimmer switch lighting we looked at in the living room? Well, right over here, right by the door, right by those stools, you also have a switch for your outside awning lighting so you can be outside and just reach in the door and click the lights on. But there's also a dimmer little uh, slider switch right there for your awning lighting. So if you're staying out late, you don't necessarily want to disrupt the neighbors or maybe attract extra bugs. You can sort of bleed that down, die that down a little bit. Another thing here too, right outside the door, you see those big blue things on the ground? Those are scales. Every single Ember RV that is made is individually weighed and measured. That's always something I like to see from a factory because technically, as crazy as this sounds, manufacturers don't actually have to do that. They are legally able to get away with measuring one floor plan that they build and then estimating each individual unit's final weights based on the options applied to it. They can get away with that. I like it when a manufacturer doesn't when it comes to weights and safety. I want to know exactly what I'm getting into, so I love that they provide that. And even though this has a little more uh, traditional kind of exterior and structure to it, I don't know. For me, it still has a look, you know? Now, take another look at the weights and measures here, uh, you know, giving you an idea of like the total holding tank capacities and length and everything to help you make sure you can marry this up to a proper vehicle. I wanna just start getting uh, dug into the details here, although Doug never shows up to work, so I'll just start digging into the details. Um, let's talk about the fact, if you look up top here, you see these crazy orange marker lights sticking up over the top of this thing, it, uh, like a couple uh, like Darth Maul horns sticking over the top of this thing. Uh, I'm, I'm the nerd part of the RV nerd for a reason, by the way. Well, that's turn signal safety lighting. So that like if you flick on your, your blinkers, 
the uh, the the lights there are gonna you know more lights on the outside of the RV blink to tell other people what you're doing, which just makes it safer for everybody on the road. Less chance of collisions, and uh, you know I don't care who wins in a collision, everybody loses. <laughs> Now the power awning on this, since it's a little bit longer sidewall than some of the other ones, um, that's actually pretty decently sized, um, which is a little bit tricky when you have that cargo locker bunk system that they have back here, because with that big full size like overhead door, it can kind of limit the, the sort of sidewall space that they might have available from time to time. Now, uh, let's talk some quick construction points. The roof of this is fully walkable, PVC roof membrane. It's a wood constructed roof, so it's very solid for snow loads and deflecting heavy weight. Um, it also allows stress uh, uh, expressed on the RV, a, a place to, to, to show up and not bang things apart. The walls and floor are both laminated and aluminum framed. Uh, they have gone to a single layer uh, Asdell uh, construction on these. So the outside layer of the sidewalls is Asdell, well, no, below the fiberglass. The bottom layer of the floor is Asdell uh, to help act as like a, a, a wicking like vapor barrier, basically. I do like how they have the slam latches on your front pass-through compartments and the protected hinges. And if you don't know what I mean by that, if you go shopping a lot of campers, this extra little guard right here, it does wonders to, to help keeping that, uh, that, that hinge from getting sprung from water, getting into it and freezing and thawing a bunch of times over time. You've also got, um, you're fully prepped and ready for a couple really cool kind of traveling things like um, side view and rear view cameras, as well as tire pressure monitoring. Now that's kind of the thing. This is their, again, E-Series, and if you want to step up on some of those features, like if you want uh, TPMS from the factory and you want, um, you know, blind spot detecting radar built onto your RV, that's what the Touring Edition is. Touring Edition is just E-Series plus, 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 but what is cool, they both have an enclosed heated underbelly and they uh, have the standard tank heating pads on these, which initially on this e-series i wasn't expecting them to do i think that was actually a really cool thing they did you're seeing uh one of the optional items available on here as well up on the roof that's the solar package this uh e-series and the touring editions they do the exact same thing in terms of solar by default from the factory they have zero watts of solar zero watts of inverter um what you can do as an option and they only have a single solar option uh, basically, you can option on their solar package, and that is a 400 watt package with a 2000 watt inverter and a 50 amp charge controller, which may actually allow you to expand up even a little bit further. So, uh, you know, it, it's not intended to be the super duty off road, off grid kind of warrior. That's a little bit more where their Overland series comes in. And uh, as Ember ages and their lineup expands, it starts to become a little more obvious how the, uh, the different members of the family kind of complement one another and interact with one another. I really love this big side door over here. Um, if you've seen my other videos, you may have seen where we've literally hooked up um, hammocks and had people hanging in here. But one of the things that's easy to miss, if you want it open for airflow, there is a little like retractable bug screen there. And I didn't get you a good look at these before, but uh, you can see where the outlets are located over here. So once again, whether it's going to be for just charging kids' devices or if you want to use it for something like uh, a desk space, you can. Not to mention the fact that you do have those handy D-ring tie-downs built right in here. So if you are going to use it for cargo space, uh, you can make sure your cargo doesn't shift around and smash into the walls or anything like that. Now the E-Series over here, um, they are, uh, you know, they have that telescopic uh, removable ladder mount up there. But one of the other kind of cool things with this is it actually does include the ladder. And that's another one of those kind of cool, uh, you know, Ember sort of things where a lot of other manufacturers only prep for certain things and don't often include them. Now, again, this series doesn't have things like the, uh, the TPMS, but again, it's the Essential series. It does everything it really needs to. And frankly, I think we, if we're, if we're being real, we can admit it does a little bit more. Now, I want to also point out, you see how I have this ladder angled very heavily like that, like utilizing the Pythagorean theorem, basically? <laughs> the reason I do that, I've seen some people not realize with those telescopic ladders, they will try to extend that ladder and mount it straight vertical on the RV, and that is not at all what they are intended to do. Um, I don't remember the exact ratio, 
but I think it's something for like every three or four feet vertical up in the air you're going, you want to extend the, the, the base of that ladder outward about one foot. It's like a three or four to one ratio. And in doing that, it'll help keep the ladder sturdy, stable, and distribute the weight and load the way it's supposed to be. And you know, I think it's been a little while since I got up here and got high on campers, but I thought I'd take you on a quick peek tour of the rooftop here. Once again, we do have a, uh, a PVC roof membrane and you do have that optional 400 watt solar package available to us. But something else that's kind of cool, you can barely see it because it's blending in, is the AC shroud is white on top, which helps it um, operate more effectively and more efficiently. Something else that's kind of cool is where you have the, uh, the power ceiling vent fans on this. You see those little ears, those little clips that are sticking up? If you wanted to install one of those rain blocker vent covers over the top of it, it requires no screws no screw guns just a couple pins hold it in place basically so the cool thing about that is you're not actually drilling holes into your roof creating potential extra leak points and you're not messing with manufacturer's warranty so it's just kind of pre-prepped to like idiot proof it basically and once again while we're looking up top here you see you've got that backup camera prep but also the extra marker lights because again when you flick on your turn signals um, you have additional light points that will help other drivers understand your intentions on the road. And lights up high are generally more apt to be seen than lights down low. Of course, you do still have tail lights down here that blink, but one of the things that's important about having those extra upper lights, not a lot of manufacturers think about this. When you have a uh, receiver accessory hitch on the back like this, sometimes people add bikes or something like that. And depending on what cargo you put on it, you could cover one of those tail lights, or at least partially, and make them a little bit harder to see. So the extra marker lights, the extra turn signal safety lighting, for me, that's an important, cool, big deal. And I love that they were not willing to bend on that. That even here, what they call their essential series, they still maintain that. Now, what I haven't looked at is like, do we have one or two sewer hookups? And we have one! Nice! This is a single-headed sewer monster, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I don't believe the E-Series has been chambered, like cold chambered and tested. I don't know if they're going to be quite as weather capable as the other embers. They might be, but at the time of this filming, I don't think they've done that. They do have a simple kind of water docking station, cable docking station over here, and that is a tankless on-demand water heater as well. So what that means is that if you got, you know, this, you could, this could be a couples model. As we've discussed, it could be a flex function kind of camper, but it could also be a, uh, uh, you know, a big time family model. And if you're going to have three or four or five bodies rolling through that shower, it's nice to make sure everybody has hot water. And jumping up to the other side of that slide, in case you're curious, this is a, uh, a cable pulled slide system. I used to say cable driven, but cables can't actually drive and push anything. They can only pull, which, you know, logically makes sense. You can see that we are slide awning prepped and ready. All the windows on these open for airflow. They don't use the Euro windows on these that they use on a lot of the other embers. It's just, um, it, it doesn't quite fit the paradigm here for lack of a better way of saying it. But I did want to showcase for you this awesome front pass through. Slam latch doors, big doors on both sides. And if you get the, uh, the optional solar package, you're getting that extra hardware up top there, that 50 amp controller and the 2000 watt inverter. I like how they mount that stuff up high though, so that shifting cargo is not uh, apt to crash and smash into it. For me, that's just a simple, smart uh, detail and design decision right there. Now, again, keep in mind, we're looking at a prototype today. There's a couple little things on this RV that are a little bit janky, but um, you know, this is kind of one of their very, actually this is their very first proof of concept on this one. Overall, I like what I see. Now, in, in the scheme of things compared to a lot of floor plans, this is not exactly like the most dynamic and original layout out there, but you know, they're, they're trying to get more into that heart of the volume section of the industry where they're, they're, they're checking those major boxes uh, but but they still brought a little bit of originality to it, like with their bunk system and whatnot. Overall, I really like what they did here, but that's me. I've always been kind of sweet on Ember RVs. I'd love to hear what you have to think about this one. And of course, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll leave you links in the description to check for pricing and availability. And I would say similar floor plans, there's nothing else exactly like this, but there's certainly plenty of double over double bunkhouse campers with super slides out there. I'll see if I can't scare a few up so you can cross compare. Let me know what you go with and why. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, 
and happy camping, everyone. Thank you.